Authorities at the Ankafo Psychiatric Hospital in the central region are contemplating possible closure of the facility due to a massive debt overhang. It is currently being chased by suppliers for unpaid debts totaling nearly a million Ghana cities. Though the medical director, Dr. Ekoama, can seize any decision to shut down cannot be unilateral, he says the two other psychiatric hospitals in the country are currently in discussion on what they will have to do next if the subventions from government do not come in good time to settle these debts. I will bring to the notice of the public. Unfortunately, people think that we have uh, stopped admissions. That is not the issue. We admit, what we say is that we have restricted admissions. Uh, just because if you admit too many people, you can't feed them. Uh, so, like I already said, we, have, we owe supplies to the tune of about 1 million cities. So, the old admissions where you had about 300, 350 on admissions is no more. But we still admit. When people are brought in a very deplorable, very bad situation, very bad uh, ill health, we don't let them take them home. So we are admitting, but we have restricted admissions. The financial situation is very dire. Money to feed patients, money to run the hospital, money to buy fuel into vehicles. All those things are still pending. Uh, we want to plead uh, that the government should release funds immediately uh, to be able to help us out of the problem, the medication problem. Uh, like I said, it wasn't, our problem didn't start with the, the banning of, of the medical store. We had that problem before. Probably it is has been worsened by the, the fire that got it, you know, but the problem has been there and we think something should be done about it. I have on the telephone Humphrey Kofi, who is Executive Secretary of Mental Health Society of Ghana, which is uh, the main mental uh, health care uh, for si Well, now we'll speak to Humphrey over the next few minutes. Well, for Humphrey, thank you very much for joining us here. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, Humphrey, how does this uh, possible closure of Angkafol, the facility in Angkafol, come to you? Well, it's, uh, it's not really. Um, let me say hello to your listeners as well. Um, but to also add that it has not really come to us as a surprise. Because if you look at the establishment of the Mental Health Fund, uh, that was um, stated, that is stated in the Mental Health Law at eight bosses currently, where government is supposed to make some commitment to ensure that uh, mental health is uh, revamped and overhauled. You notice that there, there was no budget line from the Ministry of Health towards the contribution of this fund. As we speak now, government hasn't committed any resources into the fund. And it is only the uh, donor uh, agency that is uh, uh, DFID that has shown some um, support. So if government is not showing the way, how do you expect others to, uh, to support? But of course, by government not putting in any, anything into the fund at the moment shows that government is not really prioritizing mental health. And then it therefore comes to us as no surprise because, I mean, there hasn't been any dem demonstrable um, commitment by government to show that the, the fund that is even supposed to be established, at least even a time, has been put in by government. Now, the, the issue of funding has is, is, is not only come up with this hint of closure of anchor. Pool. It came up when the Accra Psychiatric Hospital also hinted of charging patients the full cost of services rendered at the hospital. Uh, in your opinion, how can government or the Ministry of Health deal with the funding gap that seems to plague mental health uh, care in the country? Yeah, well, like, um, uh, thank you very much. But, of course, if you look at the fact that um, even medicines that are supposed to be provided uh, under the policy of mental health, which is free, is not available at the hospital. Feeding now becomes an issue. Uh, the hospitals are owing so much. Um, it tells you that even the patients themselves are not recovering because if they are there, there is no feeding, there is no medication, how do we expect them to recover? And indeed, if they are supposed to be in the hospital and are not having all these basic things, it will, it will not be so relevant for them to be there. In any case, we believe that uh, mental, health for, um, mental health in moving forward is more of community-based and institutionalized space. But for now, there are still people who need some level of uh, care that still will have to be in the hospital. 
So it is for government to show the commitment by ensuring that the medications and the food that they, need, they require to be able to recover are available at all times. But if that is not done, then I don't think that we need the well, institutions so, so, to even take care of the very few aggressive ones. Indeed. Now, so what I'm saying is that what would be your suggestion to government on how to deal with the funding gap? Yes. Um, first of all, we need to uh, downsize the hospital, I mean the psychiatric hospital. That is a fact, which I think uh, is being done to some extent. But the other bit is that government has to show the way by showing some priority commitment. Because government is, uh, of course, prioritizing other conditions, but not necessarily mental health. But it is the head that has to be stable first before the other physical conditions can, can be added on. So if we have to show the commitment, we, sh we should be showing it towards mental health for now, then the others can come along. But if we are ne neglecting mental health, we are not so concerned, uh, we think that other conditions are of priority, then we are, we are missing the mark because productivity is going to go down. And there is going to be so many people also on the streets that would seem to be very mentally sound, but would not necessarily be, be sound. Wouldn't, wouldn't we be creating... Uh, Mr. Kofi, wouldn't yes. we be creating the same problem if we downsized to, in, in, uh, as a way of filling in the, the funding gap? Wouldn't we no. be sa creating the same problem of having people on the streets? No, not necessarily. Because, you see, um, if you look at what the mental health law is saying currently, it's saying that there are a certain number of beds. I mean, every regional hospital is supposed to create a psychiatric wing. Every district hospital is also supposed to create a psychiatric wing. Now, all these people who travel all the way from various regions to converge in the hospitals, the bigger hospitals, are now going to be seen as, a, as, a, as their locality or as their community. And then what it means is that they will either uh, seek mental health services from the regional hospitals, from the district hospitals, and not necessarily have to come to converge even as a bigger hospital to create a problem of... Um, um, the hospital having to close down because there's no money to take care of medicine and food. Because even at the district hospital where the psychiatric wings will be created, the, the, the patients will have to be admitted for a few number of days, after which when they recover, they are supposed to go back into their community. So the issue of they staying over long period in the hospital to come to that extent where government will have to, um, or, or sorry, the authorities will have to close down, etc., will not necessarily come up. Because they should be dealt with at the community level, and it is easier to manage it at the community level than at the, at the institutional level. Well, indeed. Uh, hold the line for me briefly. Professor Joseph Bedia Kwasare has joined our conversation. He's chairman for the Mental Health Authority, Ghana. Uh, thank you very much for your time here, Professor. Hello, Prof. Hello, yes. Prof, I'm grateful for your time this morning. But... How far have we gone with getting funds for mental health in Ghana? Uh, can you repeat the question again? I, I'm, asking, I, yes. I'm asking what strides we have made as a country in getting enough funds for mental health in Ghana? Oh, uh, at the moment we are putting on uh, some funds given to us by DFID. And what we started doing is really trying to implement the Mental Health Act um, gradually. Uh, what we are doing is to appoint regional coordinators, uh, which we have done so far, so appointed regional coordinators. Mm. Now, my understanding yes. is, is that this Our particular... in the region. Indeed. And they are going to see to it that mental health is properly decentralized and that funds are sent from sources to make them work efficiently. At the moment, we have a thin, um, thin some money, mm. which is not much. That How much is money? going to be used for that purpose. How much now, money? Well, um, I cannot tell you exactly how much we're going to give them. An estimate? But then there are a few things that have to be done. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, um, written an airline which has been um, looked at by um, Attorney General Department, and when that is, uh, is accepted, mm. it will go to Parliament so that we have a dedicated fund for mental health. Uh, we have established a fund which will soon be outdoors. And uh, corporate bodies uh, and other people, and also we have money from government 
to run mental health services. We are expecting that we have um, every district um, somewhat uh, designated for the management of mental illness, and we downsize all the three psychiatric hospitals. We're going to train, uh, we have trained, we we'll continue to train more people to work in the communities uh, so that we will not have many people in hospitals, but rather managed at uh, home close to where they live. But as you said, as you, you actually pointed out, it all amounts to money. And uh, at the moment, the money that we have is not enough. And we're hoping that government will inject some more funds into uh, to the mental health authority. How uh, much more? Prof. Prof. Professor Sari, uh, how much uh, more? It's very faint. In fact, I can't hear you. I'm going to give it another try. How much okay. more? Do, do you need, as an authority, to be able to fund uh, all of these plans you have? Oh, your line is failed. I can't hear you, honestly. How much money? So how, yes. much, how much more do you need in terms of funding? How much more do yes. we need in terms of funding? Indeed. Oh, uh, <laughs> We we need something cause to, uh, more than more than say um, uh, some more than a billion series Ghana series. Pro Professor, uh, Professor Sai, it, yes. it sounds yes. as though we are not clear on exactly how much we need. It is is it that we haven't done any studies to be able to determine how much we would need to to set all of these uh, all of all of these plans and activities uh, in motion. Yes, we have an idea about how much we need annually. Uh -huh. But for us to be able to operate efficiently for the state in the next five years, some, some money has been given, which is not, uh, it's, it's not we, we have about, um, uh, let's say, how much do we have? About 1,500 1, uh, 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 pounds. That is being used at the moment that we are using now, you know. And uh, for us to do it well, uh, to be able to um, do what you want to do, I cannot, at the moment that I'm speaking to you, mm. uh, tell you how much exactly we need. Uh, but this, this thousand, to you later. this thousand five hundred pounds you mentioned. Is, is it's it what we are operating now? Well, that's, all, that's what we have now. That is being one, used. One thousand five hundred pounds. Yes. Is, is it over a certain period, or this is what you have over from the a government? Period of, of a period of about five years. For a period no, of five that years? Know, but yeah, how that, much you know, is 1,500 pounds? Is it? Uh, as you know, that is not enough for now. Uh, it's just something that's been given to us to establish, um, uh, the, uh, to implement, and to do the, uh, the basic things that we need to make sure that uh, mental health uh, act is being implemented. For, those, for instance, we, we don't have a, a building. You know, you need to have an authority that cannot be factored into that money. All that is being done is to do the basic background work mm. of getting people in places. Indeed. And, Indeed, Prof. Uh, brief, briefly, though, uh, tell us this yeah. LI you, you, have, you, you intend taking to Parliament to, to establish some sort of funding for mental health care in Ghana. Yeah. How, how is the LI proposing that we get uh, funding for, 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 for it, for mental health care? Yes, uh, we, the, the, according to the Act, the fund has been established. But the, the LI is proposing that funds would be obtained from donors, from consolidated funds, from um, sources, corporate Ghanaians, and, uh, and also people um, for our own um, uh, projects that we we'll write and other sources. But the main reliable sources that we, we hope would uh, promote mental health will be from government funds. And that one has not been decided yet. It's when the LI has been properly um, sent to Parliament that Parliament will give a quantum of money that can be provided, a percentage of the consolidated fund that can be given to us. Very well. Mental health services. Well, okay. I'm grateful for your time once again. You're Professor welcome. Joseph okay. Bidiakwa Sare right. is chairman for the Mental Health Authority.
en Ghana.